Welcome to another video of Dose Bros. Our problem today is that Dad installed a new tile into the bathtub, which made this pipe shorter where the faucet goes because this tile is thicker than how it used to be. So now it doesn't go all the way and it's not stable. And today we'll show you how to fix that. Remember kids, make sure to do this work with adult supervision. We're not pros, but if we can do it, you can do it. Today the tools that we will be using is a pipe sander, a pipe cutter, and a shark bite push to connect cobbling. And when you are ready, you can, let me unscrew this, you could put this pipe cutter at least around the middle of the pipe so that the coat link could fit. And you stop doing turning this part when you feel like it is stable enough. So when you have put it and it's firm, now give it a couple spins any direction and then after you have given it a couple spins, try to tighten it more. So you keep spinning it until it cuts the pipe. So now you sand the pipes to make it nice and smooth for the coping to fit. the next one. Normally, people would do it to the right. So, what the shark bite is, is when you push it into the pipe, you would hear a click, and that means that it has connected. Now that you have connected the shark bite, you can give it a little pull just to make sure that it has connected. Just to make sure. Now that it is connected, you connect the other part of the pipe. The shark bite did not work for this method because it has a rotating mechanism that lets the pipe spin. And in order to put a faucet here, you need the pipe to be steady and the faucet to be steady with it. The shark bite method did not work for this, so yeah, we have to go for option number two, which is Sweden method. And don't forget, if you're finding this video helpful, make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notification for new videos. Now, we're gonna sand the inside of the pipe so for a better jointing. Make sure to clean both sides of the pipe for better jointing so it could be free of dust and free of other materials. Now we are ready to solder the pipe. For this method, we're going to use 95 Lev Free Tinning Flux. This will make it easier for your solder to join the pipes. Also, put some inside of your coupling. Make sure not to push your coupling all the way in because you still need the pipe to be long enough for your faucet to fit. We don't have a professional torch, so we'll be using a Burnzomatic lighter to do this job. This could be used for smaller jobs. This torch is helpful in a lot of ways. We can use it for camping trips, we can use it for parties, etc, etc. We'll put the link in the description for you guys to check it out. If they heat the pipes enough for the solder 
to join the pipes. Once it's hot enough, it will start to melt and with the help of the flux, it will start connecting both of the pipes. Make sure that you solder all around the pipe and if you see any spots that are missing some work, then go over it again to make sure that everything is welded correctly. Wait for a few seconds and then grab a wet towel and bring it around the pipe so you have a nice clean solder pipe. So the next thing we do is do the other side but put less flux because we, when you put a lot of flux on the other side it didn't quite work. So try to put less flux. And again, make sure to heat the pipes so it's hot enough to melt the solder and make a good job. Once it's hot enough, it'll joint the pipes. And remember, we're not pros, so if we can do it, you can do it. And I hope that our videos are helpful for you for any of your projects that you need. Now, it's weld all around. Grab your wet towel and clean all around the pipe so you will have a nice copper welding job. Looks pretty good. The reason we had to cut the pipe and solder it was because it's also soldered inside in the wall. One way to check that you guys don't have any leaks before you put everything else is to put a copper pipe in its place and lock it. Now you can turn the water back on from the house to, to look for any leaks on the pipe. Uh, okay, it looks like it, we did a decent job, but it's still leaking from the cap. But that's because we need some tap on right there. So now you grab the tap one and put it right there to prevent the part from leaking. Don't put too much, just the area that needs to be covered. How do you know how long the pipe needs to be? And this is how we did it. We grab the measuring tape and we put it all the way inside. As you can see, when I put it all the way inside, it's four inches. And so we measured the pipe four inches and one quarter so it can fit right. So now we have to put the faucet right where it goes. And all you have to do now is to turn it till you feel like it's pretty tight. So now that everything's in place, all you have to do is put caulking sealant around the chrome for waterproof. But it looks like we did just fine because when you turn it on, It looks like it's working just fine. The reason that the shark bite didn't work for this project is because the mechanism lets the pipe spin. If we did put the pipe in there, it would let the faucet spin instead of putting it in place. Here's a helpful tip if you really wanted to use the shark bite. You can use super glue and glue the mechanisms to not let it spin. And then connected to the pipes. So we ended up soldering the pipe with these tools and my brother is gonna tell you the name of them. So 
we used the Ote H2095 Tinium Flux and the Ote Welder to finish this job. These are the tools that we, I mentioned in this video. The pipe sander, the pipe cutter, and the pipe, the inside pipe sander, and the cover. And if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like us and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and after all this work, I think I'm gonna need a shower. Don't forget to click the notification bell, like us, and subscribe for more coming videos.